Welcome back to Online Perm Research. My name is Toby with Homestar Inspections. When researching permit information on a property located in Lake Worth Beach, you first want to verify that it's not going to be in the unincorporated Palm Beach County. And you do that by going to the property appraiser's website, which is located at pbcgov.org forward slash PAPA. In the center here, you want to put in the address. Today's example is going to be 220 north l street in lake worth click search and on the property details page you're going to get a lot of information you first want to verify the address and the first line here location address is 220 north l street that's correct second line down is going to be the municipality and that is lake worth beach so this permit information for this property is going to be located at the building department of Lake Worth Beach Incorporated. And that's also verified by the fact that the parcel control number, the, sec the third line down, is started by 38. So you know moving forward, any parcel control number that starts with 38 in Palm Beach County should be Lake Worth Beach. And then there's a picture of it right here. I also like to gather the year built just, in, just for more information right here, 1928. All right, so this thing's been around for a minute. This will help you understand that the website might not be the complete picture. If it's you know 2018, then you can say, okay, this website should have all the permits that are available for the property on it. 1928, most likely not. So just keep that in mind when going to search for older properties that you should always contact the building department to see if there's any records requests that you, you need to do, especially if you want to look at old additions. But some people like roofs, they should be on the website. So with that information, you want to go to our website, which is located at homestarinspectionsfl.com, where you can schedule now or permit search. Click on permit search. And scroll down to Palm Beach County. And you can see that all the videos are located right here for Palm Beach County. And then all, unincorporated is going to be at top. And then all the cities will be alphabetized. So just keep on scrolling down to Lake Worth Beach. Click here. They finally put beach in there. I mean, why not? It's on the beach, right? All right. So we got the select permit and the application number. Of course, we don't know the application number. So you want to go to address. Start typing it in, 220 North L Street. And I like to put in as much information here as possible. Click continue. All right, there's 10 entries there and there's a total of 15. So what I like to do, instead of toggling back and forth between these two pages, I like to go back to the top and just select 25. That way all the permits are together on the same page. All right, so you have multiple columns, six columns in total. And the first column's application number, which is identified by two digits, a dash, and then three, six, eight more digits. The first two digits before the dash are going to represent the year of that permit. And then the permit number itself is going to be within those eight digits after the dash. So, for instance, this permit right here is from 2003. Scroll down further, 2008. Scroll down further, 2013, scroll down further, 2016, and so forth. Keep on going down all the way to 2019. So this house was built in 1928, and you're telling me the first permit was pulled in 2003? Probably not. So keep that in mind when you're looking at these uh, permit websites, the year built and how far back the site goes. Uh, for this property, I would definitely be contacting the building department directly to see if there's any other information. But let's continue with this what we have and see what we can gather. The first column, like I said, is the application number, then the address. You always want to double check the address, followed by the parcel control number, the contractor, application type, and then the application status. The application type is going to tell you the type of permit that was pulled. The application status is going to let you know if there's any open or expired permits. And you can see here, this, these first four rows here are all voided and if you go to the permit number, they're all identical. So that goes to show you that even though there's a total of 15 records on file, that's not 15 different permits. That's for 15 lines. 
uh, and that the first four right here are the same permit. So it doesn't mean that there's 15 permits. It just means there's 15 lines. Uh, and I guess that's how they count them on the website. And this is for residential plumbing. So, you know, older 1928 style house, maybe they try to repipe re the house underneath the drain pipes underneath the house or the water supply pipe itself. Actually, even though it's voided, let's go ahead and, and hover over the permit number and right click on it and open link in a new tab. And let's dig into it more. $550 was the valuation. So it might be something small. Uh, the five, the valuation, just so you know, the valuation is always truncated or sometimes fudged by the contractors as sometimes the, the permit fee, uh, does have a, a function of how expensive the job is. So the cheaper they can make that valuation on the permit, the cheaper the permit costs will be. And if they're pulling several hundred permits a year, it's going to add up for them. So they tend to truncate that number. So that number doesn't really tell us that much and either does the rest of the permit for that matter. Um, let's right click on structural details, see what that tells us. Nope, nothing else. How about inspection status? Right click. Nothing all the way down. Okay. So we don't know what that permit was for. Uh, it was voided anyways, but the application status column is what I use when I do all of my home inspections and I'm writing the reports. I like to let the buyers and sellers for that matter know if there's an open or expired permit. Sometimes these contractors don't close them out and the title companies like to see them closed out. So if I can get to it up front, I will. I'll let you know about it. That'll save you some time down the road. Sometimes the title companies won't get to it later on. And you want to jump on these issues ASAP, especially when you're on a contract. We add that to our services for free. So that's the application status column. And if we scroll down, all the other permits are closed out. So everything that's available online is either voided or closed out. That's good. The second column, second to last column is the application type. That's residential plumbing. Those were the first four. Then the next two are residential windows and doors. And that's identical permits as well which window door permit, that's good for wind mitigation if you wanna verify the impact rating of a window or door. 2013, there's two different, there's several different permits actually. No, well, actually two different permits. The first one is an open permit search request. A lot of times the cities, you have to pull permits to do an open permit search request. That was done in 2013. And in fact, you might be able to get those records from the city themselves that from 1928 up to 2013, was there any open permits? And then from then on till today, the rest of them should be online. But you can verify that with, this, with the building department as well. The next one down is residential plumbing from 2013. Residential plumbing. Uh, those two are the same permit. You can see over here again from 2013, permit number 2742, 2742. They're identical. All right, another open permit search request from 2015, another one from 2016, and electrical residential from 2016, residential electrical from 2016, residential air conditioning from 2019, and another, the same permit from 2019, the residential air conditioning. There are no roof permits to be had on this website, which, you know, Given that the website goes back to 2003 and it's a flat roof, uh, it's questionable whether or not the roof would have any life expectancy. So basically you're going into this as, with the knowledge that there's no roof permit online. Now is are all websites 100% thorough? No, they are created by man and there's gonna be issues with them. So you always wanna double check with the seller Say, hey, you know, I'm trying to find the last permit for this roof. When was it done? Let them show you documentation that it was done. It's rare, but sometimes they're done without a permit. Those are really rare because roofers don't want to get busted. They're, they're too exposed out there. And a, 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 perming, a permit inspector or code enforcement is going to see them very easily hacking away at the top of your roof. So typically they're always pulled. Uh, but you want to find out what, how old the, the last roof is permit was in order to determine what kind of viable life expectancy 
this roof would have uh, should you want to buy it. Or maybe if you're a listing agent, you want to list the property. Uh, there's no information on this website uh, through their website regarding roof permits. You'll have to contact the sellers directly and also the building department to see when the last permit was done. Um, that's basically it. So this is all a free service for you. I put these videos together. Uh, if you could, please like and subscribe. Help us out. If you need to contact me directly, you can contact us through our website or email me. Uh, our website, which is homestarinspectionsfl.com or email me directly at toby at homestarinspectionsfl.com. Take it easy.